يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه مطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه We begin in our lesson today with the second part of purification of the second part of purification. And this is not a puzzle. In the beginning, we defined purification to be izalatul khabathi wa raf'ul hadath, removing of the impurity and uplifting the ritual impurity. The ritual impurity is divided into two types. Minor, which is done by uplifting it through wudu or tayammum. And the second part is by lifting the major ritual impurity by ghusl, which we, what we'll talk about, or by tayammum as well. And we will come to discuss this later on, insha'Allah. So what is the definition of ghusl? Ghusl linguistically means to pour water over the body while rubbing it and ensuring that it reaches there. But legislatively is to pour water all over your body with the intention of, intention is important, with the intention of uplifting the major ritual impurity while including rinsing your nose and your mouth as well. And this is a difference of opinion among scholars. Now, what are the reasons we should perform ghusl for? There are mandatory, obligatory reasons, and there are recommended reasons. Among the obligatory, mandatory reasons is when a person becomes in the state of janaba, And this is due to ejaculation of semen, whether a person is awake or asleep. So whenever semen is emitted, and the emission of semen must be in the form of ejaculation, in the gushing form, not due to an illness where it comes without gushing. No, this does not require ghusl. If it comes out in a gushing form and usually accompanied in, if a person is awake and conscious, accompanied by a feeling of sensation and pleasure. So if this happens, then the person becomes in the state of sexual impurity or major ritual impurity. Number two, if there is penetration for either the male or the female, whenever there is the penetration of the male genital into the female, then th once this happens, there is the major ritual impurity state. Whether ejaculation takes place or not, the mere penetration requires the state of ghusl. And this is mentioned in the hadith narrated by or reported by Imam Muslim, where the Prophet says, when there is the act of intimacy and or sexual intercourse and the circumcised organs 
get in touch, meaning the head of the penis is inserted in the women's uh, uh, vagina, then ghusl is mandated on, and obligatory. The third case where ghusl is mandated is when a woman is pure from her monthly cycle because haid or menses or the monthly period is one of the things that prevents a woman from praying because she is in the major ritual impurity state. And the Prophet wasallam ordered Fatima bint Abi Hubaysh, may Allah be pleased with her, that when she gets her menses, she should refrain from praying. And the Prophet وسلم, ordered Um Habiba, may Allah be pleased with her, to have ghusl, meaning after she is pure from her menses. And Allah mentioned this in the Quran when He says, and do not approach women, them, until they are pure, meaning when they're in the state of menstruation, do not approach them until they're pure. Once and when they have purified themselves, not once they're pure, meaning the stoppage of the bleeding is not sufficient. Once they purified themselves, then come to them, meaning once they have ghusl. So this is also an extra piece of information that if a man's wife stops bleeding and she doesn't have her menses anymore, she sees her purity, he cannot be intimate with her until she performs ghusl, according to this ayah. And the fourth uh, uh, means or reason for ghusl would be postnatal bleeding. When a woman gives birth, then she is also uh, obliged to perform ghusl once the postnatal bleeding stops exactly and similarly to uh, menses. And this is the consensus of all scholars of Islam that postnatal bleeding is treated exactly as uh, uh, the monthly cycle or a woman's menstruation. And the fifth reason for obligating ghusl is death. But hey, I'm dead. How can I be obliged? No, the obligation is not you, on you as a deceased, rather on the living. If they end up with a Muslim dead in their hand, or between their hands or in front of them, then they're obliged to wash him and give him ghusl as per the hadith of Umm Atiyah when one of the Prophet's daughters died, the Prophet ordered the women to wash her three, five uh, or more times um, and he explained to them how that should be done. So his instruction and order means that it is mandatory. And also regarding that person on Hajj who was wearing ihram and he died while in the state of ihram, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi ordered the companions to wash him and give him ghusl. What about if there is an abortion, a miscarriage? What do we do with the fetus? There is no ghusl unless the fetus is four months of age and above. Because the fetus is not considered to be a human being until the soul is breathed in. And according to the authentic hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, the soul is not breathed in until the fetus is 120 days old. So if this happens, then yes, we wash the um, miscarriage and treat it as a human being. The recommended forms of ghusl, one, when a person reverts to Islam 
as per the hadith of Qais ibn Asim and Thumam ibn Athal, may Allah be pleased with them. So this is a recommendation. It's not mandatory. Number two, after washing a corpse of a Muslim, and this is also a recommendation, not mand mandatory. So if I were to wash and prepare a dead Muslim, after washing him, it's recommended that I take a ghusl myself. Thirdly, someone who wakes up after losing consciousness, after, being, after fainting. And there's a hadith that some scholars believe that supports this, though it's arguable, arguably doubted. Why? The hadith stated that the Prophet Sallallahu at the end of his life, in one incident, fainted a number of times. Every time he woke up, he used to ask them to help him to have a ghusl. And he did this a number of times, and he performed ghusl. But it is argued that he did this to refresh, not to perform the ghusl that we know uh, um, in Sharia. Ah. But again, this is the doing of the Prophet Sallam, and scholars do have the right to stem this ruling from it. Likewise, those who lose consciousness can also perform ghusl if a person was temporarily in the state of insanity. So if a person lost his mind, he, he became insane for a period of time, then regained his sanity, then it is recommended for him to perform uh, a ghusl. How to perform ghusl? There are two ways. One way is the sufficient way. And this way is simply to cover your whole body with water and drench your mouth and nose. No need to follow any particular order. So if you stand under the shower and you thoroughly wash your head and hair and ensure that the water reaches every part of your body, you rinse your mouth and nose, that's it. If you dip yourself in the water, in the river, or in uh, the ocean and come out doing the same thing, rinsing your mouth and nose, that's it. But there is a sunnah way of doing it, which the Prophet used to do, alayhi salatu salam, by first washing your hands three times, then washing your private, heart, uh, private part with your left hand, then washing your hands again to ensure that there's no filth on them, then performing a complete wudu in the same sequence and order. Then you put three scoops of water on your head and ensure that the water reaches the roots of your hair and your, scal your scalp. Then you pour water all over your right hand side and your left hand side of your body, the whole body, to ensure that it covers it. And then you wash your feet and you are done. This is the sunnah way of making ghusl. Be careful not to exaggerate in using water. The Prophet ﷺ did not use more than three liters of water for his ghusl. People today use gallons, not liters. And people today take extreme time to perform ghusl, maybe like half an hour or so. And no, ghusl should not take more than a couple of minutes. And ghusl is not related to shampooing your hair or washing your body with soap. It's not related. This is a different issue. You want to clean yourself? Go ahead. Take your time. But don't relate this to ghusl. Ghusl is just to wash your body with pure water. So if you want to use soap, you either do this in the beginning, then do the ghusl, or do the ghusl, then do uh, use soap afterwards, but don't mix the two so that shaitan would not 
confuse you and prolong the process. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Ya raghiban fi kulli ilmin nafi'in ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى ننازات أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان